Hey guys, it's Shannon from That DIY Couple, and today I'm going to take you around with me as I go through my house and identify products that might have toxins in them. Okay, Ellie is here, awake, and ready to help with this task. So I was just looking at Latisse. There wasn't anything environmental worth in your group, so I'm Googling it, what you should know about Latisse. New York Times, mm. long last long lashes without prescription but with risks can cause redness itchiness and irritation which will go away if discontinued so i haven't experienced any of those so i'm looking at some allergy concerns i'm not seeing anything hugely linked to like big things like cancer so john's got this is what i just got for him for christmas good fellow and co Moroccan mint, shave gel, sorbitol, PVP. I think that one's bad. A lot of fruit extracts. I like that. I don't see the word fragrance. So I'm, I like that. Let's see what Skin Deep says. I don't see their shave gel, but all their other stuff seems to be one, threes, or fours. So that's pretty good. That covers actually John's shampoo and body wash and face wash, which I also got him for Christmas. And those look like they're generally okay. Okay, let's take a look at my shampoo and conditioner. This is, I use Olaplex for the most part. These are generally fours, fives, that anything under five is okay for me where I'm at right now on my journey. I just wanna make sure I'm avoiding the really bad stuff. I'm not looking to totally overhaul my life at this exact moment. What do you think? Let's take a look at this stuff. Hand cream, fragrance free, that's a good sign. Here it is, <gasps> three. Not too bad. So far, I'm doing pretty good. I, maybe I need to dig further, but so far stuff is looking okay. Oh, wait a minute. This one's got paraben. There is stuff in their ingredients that is really bad for you. So this, is the, this one's a nine. It's not the overall ranking, but there's some stuff in it that has really bad rankings. So developmental reproductive toxicity, allergies, endocrine disruption, high. Ecotoxolate. So this stuff is actually really bad. It's got some bad stuff. All right, let's see another stuff. Let's see some more stuff. Tart, Amazonian clay. I bought this, I remember, because it's advertised as being kind of an eco-friendly one. I see like their airbrush foundation, but not the one that I use. The ones that I see are fours and five, so actually not super good. Let's see, let's get a sense of what's in one of the other products that they make, which doesn't really help us, it's not this product. Ooh, look at this. Cancer causing is high. Allergies and toxic high. Use restrictions high. I don't, I'm sort of not understanding how this can be a like, this isn't too bad for you. Five. That doesn't, that's terrible. All right, let's take a look at this lipstick. So this is, I think this is L'Oreal. This is part of the reason that I'm doing this is because she puts literally everything in her mouth and I wanna make sure that it's not too bad. So this is a, this is a bad one, six. Get that out of your mouth. So cancer is moderate. Developmental toxicity, reproductive toxicity is none. Okay, good. Allergies, immunotoxicity, high. Use restrictions, high. So in high ingredient concerns. Endocrine disruption, con contamination, organ system tox. So I am really frustrated that this product that I bought that advertises itself as being like natural is so misleading and that it has all these issues in it that potentially cause cancer. That's like super scary to me. Same with this L'Oreal product. Like these don't advertise themselves as natural. So maybe, I guess I should have known, but it's so frustrating. Here's another one that sort of advertises itself as a natural. Let's see how it stacks up. So this is a um, brand called Purology. Just from the name alone, you would think probably good for you, right? Pure means good. 100% vegan, that looks good. Nothing for best blonde. Let's just see the brand as a whole, how much they seem to care. Here's a serious color care hydrate shampoo, five. No cancer concerns so far, that's good. No development toxicity, high allergies and immunotoxicity, high use restrictions. What are use restrictions? Ingredients restricted or prohibited for use in cosmetics according to industry safe guidelines, for guidance from the US, EU, Japan, or Canada. So what I like about the environmental working groups is that they don't just look at US regulations, they also include regulations from other countries that are a little bit ahead of the curve in terms of keeping their citizens safe. 
A lot of other countries, it seems, have taken issue with some of the products that are used by this. I use this Listerine Cool Mint every day. Let's take a look at that. Fair. Number three, no cancer risks, no development, no allergies, some use restrictions. Okay, so this is like not actually that bad. And none of the ingredients are red that they've looked at. So I'm happy to hear that this thing that I swirl in my mouth twice a day for the last many years is not terrible for me. That's really, deodorant. you think deodorant's gonna be bad? I bet you're right. Gillette. According to the website, this does contain fragrance, even though it doesn't actually say that on the, this. Maybe it does say that. Oh, it does say fragrance. This is one of the things that contains the ingredient fragrance, which is on this website in eight, eight being bad. The other items are in the threes, like it's aluminum, aluminum, zirconium, whatever, which I guess is what makes you not sweat. And then other things contains water, which is a one, so that's good. Actually, this is better than I thought. I thought that antiperspirant deodorant with, with this scent was gonna be really bad, but as we suspected, I think the worst thing is the fragrance. If it's got any of the red ones in the ingredients, I think we should set it aside. So I'm a little bit overwhelmed just starting in the bathroom. I'm kind of scared to go into the other rooms of my house. So another thing we're gonna check is the shower curtain because anytime you see a plastic that is bendy, you should be on high alert because bendable plastics, flexible plastics often can contain a high level of a chemical called phthalates, which are sort of unstable molecules that can leave the product that they're on and enter your skin and cause all sorts of hormone disruptions, endocrine issues, cancer, asthma, product, like fertility issues, things like that. So I just Googled here phthalates and shower curtains and the first thing that says is high levels of phthalates were also found in the shower curtains examined, which is a problem because phthalates are a pretty unstable chemical. Phthalates migrate in the shower curtain itself, eventually making their way to the surface where they evaporate into the air they cling to the dust in your home. I'm gonna get rid of this shower curtain, assuming that it has high levels of phthalates, and I'm gonna try to find a non-toxic alternative. I'm gonna keep the fabric one, but get rid of the plastic one. No more shower curtain that is made of plastic. No. All right, we're in the living room area. We've got this fire burning. I've been curious for a while about whether or not these fire logs that we use contain problematic issues. We love to like put these rugs down. This is like a fake synthetic rug, which I should probably check as well. We'll put these down and we'll sit in front of the fire. Duraflame fire log, indoor, outdoor. Goodness. Sorry, we couldn't find that product. So they don't have any info about Duraflame which is probably means it's bad. So there's not a lot of information on this, but this website says wood and synthetic logs are sources of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, PAHs, and cause mammary cancer in animal experiences, experiments. Both contribute to residential air pollution, but researchers found that only the synthetic logs were found to be associated with an increased risk of breast cancer. I would probably start shying away from the synthetic log and sticking to the real thing. Okay, um, the other thing I'm curious about is the safety of this rug that I'm sitting on. I have like picked up over the years a number of cheap rugs. I understand that the concern with a lot of furniture is that you wanna be on the lookout for formaldehyde and flame retardants. 80% acrylic, 20% polyester. I don't know if those are bad. Let's see. The vast majority of area rugs are sold from a polyester, propylene, acrylic, nylon, or other synthetic materials that are full of toxins. Mm. Just gonna not sit on this while I read this. Gross. So synthetic mater materials can or cannot be toxic. Not They're not always toxic, but flame retardants are really bad. Natural materials like cotton and wool can be a problem, but they should be organic without pesticides. So I'm really disappointed to learn that the abundance of cute, very cheap, conveniently priced rugs that I have been buying recently are most likely full of toxins. I got this rug, which is a wool rug, I believe. I was told it's an antique rug, and I believe that those are typically a little bit safer, although I have to probably do some more research on that. This is another synthetic rug. I got this on ruggable.com. I was really excited about it because it has this like detachable thing so that with the pets, I can just throw this in the wash. 100% polyester for the back. Also 100% polyester. Polyester fabric. 
releases chemicals like phthalates into the air through contact with the skin. These chemicals have been shown to cause hormone disruption and health issues. Aside from the harmful chemicals that polyester releases, the, this fabric also poses more direct health concerns. One of the things that I've been like really concerned about is these containers. I got these from Walmart, Better Homes and Garden, and OXO, hodgepodge of both. But I want to check the recycle codes because remember, three and seven I've read are the ones that are typically considered problematic as a result of phthalate. So it's a seven in the little recycling arrows, which means that this is made of the type of recycled plastic that likely contains phthalates. What that means is that these bioorganic, like volatile compounds are probably leaching into the food that's in here. Let's check these all. This one's Better Homes. That was OXO, this is Better Homes. Also made with the seven. So that's really unfortunate because I've been keeping my food in these. These chemicals in particular act as like hormone disruptors. Okay, let's look at something else. Paper towels. I hope they're fine because I use them every day, multiple times a day. The two main chemicals found in paper towels are chlorine, and formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is a known carcinogen. Also, just like thermal receipt paper, paper towels have been found to contain a very high amounts of BPA. So how can you reduce the risk of formaldehyde? Try to remove products um, from your home and try to open the windows while you use them. Paper towels, are you kidding me? I use these like every day. I clean up a lot of poop with these. I'll do more research, but I don't know how I'm gonna live without that. Basically, a big source of toxins in food is in in meat and dairy and that you have to be very careful if you eat those but that eating a plant-based diet in general is thought to be a good way to avoid things like phthalates which I already do so I'm not super worried about that. People are also really concerned about buying organic. I have only recently come to the it's worth it to spend money on organic vegetables bandwagon and the reason is not about the practice that goes into the thing itself or it's not about the seeds or whatever. It's about the pesticides that are used on non-organic produce that's covered in the other video that we're doing. Let's choose a cleaning product. I use this all the time, multiple times a day. Lysol, all-purpose cleaner, complete clean. For household cleaners, they do it a little differently. D rating is the second worst. It's high concern, likely hazards to health or environment. The only one that's worse is an F, which is the highest concern. So let's see what it's got. Alkyl, dimethyl, benzyl, ammonium, chlorides, alkyl, Okay, there's a lot of stuff in here that are ranked C, D, and F, and only water and ethanol are ranked A. This is really bad, guys. <laughs> I'm really just, I use this every day. I use it every day, like multiple times. It's like giving me a headache just thinking about it. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have to find alternatives. Luckily, their website gives you alternatives. So I'm, I'm excited to try those. Let's try palmo olive antibacterial. Active ingredient. <laughs> 2% lactic added, said 98% inert ingredients. I wonder what that means. <laughs> palm olive antibacterial, let's see. Okay, here it is. Colgate palm olive antibacterial. It's an F, it's, it's a failure. It kills 99% of bacteria on dishes, but it's an F. <sighs> Sodium laurel sulfate. So sulfates are one that we cover in the other video that are bad. Sulfonate, sulfonate, fragrance. Tetrastonium edite dyes, sulfuric acid, methanol, sodium sulfate. So it's it's really bad, guys. Environmental Working Group does not like this one. This is the worst one that we found. And I use it every day. <sighs> so frustrating. Let's, you know what I also eat every day? I. I eat almost every day at least. Peanut butter, I saved this for this video because it's it's empty, but I wanted to check it before we threw it away. So this is from Trader Joe's. It's organic, creamy, peanut butter, salted. USA organic, okay, 100% recyclable container. What's the code say? It's a one, okay. It's a one, that's good. It's not a three or a seven. Trader Joe's coming through for me on the better packaging. All right, hang on. Okay, the Environmental Working Group doesn't have anything on Trader Joe's peanut butter, but given that the only ingredients are organic Valencia peanuts and sea salt, and it's in a container that doesn't likely can't contain phthalates, I am happy and I am not giving up this peanut butter. This stays. Not this one, because it's empty. 
but all the other ones I have in the garage stay. I actually know the answer to this one. A lot of people are concerned about toxins bleaching from the plastic and water bottles into your water. And this is actually, this was left by somebody else at our house, but we don't, we don't use water bottles like this. Not for the toxins, but for the environment. But I was actually surprised to learn that people are not super concerned, at least with respect to phthalates, of, with them bleaching it. It doesn't tend to be as much of an issue. I think some of the concern is what happens when the water bottles are heated. That's when the chemicals tend to leach more. But in general, like, don't use water bottles. Don't use water bottles. Like, they're terrible for the environment. Just don't. Stop. I gotta add the palm oil and the Lysol to the table, which is where I'm gathering the things that I need to find better alternatives for. All right, um, another one, I already looked this up a couple days ago, but um, this is the IKEA ch kitchen that I got for Ellie. And I did learn that e IKEA's um, particle board stuff does use a lot of formaldehyde. And so a natural wood option would be a lot better, particularly for a child's play place. Um, and also there's a bunch of like plastic in here. With plastic, it's not like you have to be terrified of all plastic. Actually, one like this is probably okay because the rule of thumb is that if it's a soft plastic that's bendable and flexible, then you should have your like antenna go up because it might have phthalates. But harder plastics are not, not thought to be as problematic. This is actually, we got this used on Craigslist from somebody else. It was probably in their house for a long time. It probably off-gassed for a long time. Off-gassing is when a new product releases a lot of toxins. Like when you smell, when you use your nose and you smell a new product really strongly of chemicals, it's probably off-gassing chemicals that are bad for you into the environment. So maybe this is okay because it's, it's older and it's probably off-gassed a lot, but like all things being equal and money not being any object, I would rather have her playing with something that was made of wood as opposed to compressed, this type of fake wood, which contains formaldehyde from Ikea. Ellie is back up from her nap and is going to help me look at some of the laundry products that we typically use. We use the all stain lifters, free and clear, 100% free of perfumes and dyes. I buy this because it looks like a natural product um, I'm excited to see whether or not it is or not. I'm not seeing a recycling club code on it or the ingredients. Maybe it comes on the box, which I've thrown away. Uh, wait a minute. Here's a recycling code. It's a two. Okay. Okay. That bodes well. Let's see what the environmental working group says. It's a D. So it's bad. D is the second worst. It's got high, it's a high concern item, likely causes hazards to the health or the environment, asthma, environment, skin, developmental. Okay, it's got a bunch of bad ingredients, including sulfates, alcohol, ugh. Just stuff that I don't know what it is, but the environmental working group has said that it's bad and I trust them. So this probably goes for me over here. I'm gonna try to find an alternative to this. This I've used for years and it frustrates me that it's so bad because it's like free and clear, 100% free, free of perfumes and dyes. Like they're definitely marketing themselves as a natural-ish, like better for you option. And I think I pay a premium versus others for that. The other thing that we frequently use, we actually don't use dryer sheets, but I know, the reason we don't use them is because I know that they're really bad. Dryer sheets are really bad. I use Clorox uh, bleach. Let's see, uh, let's check the bottle. It's also a two, so that's probably good. It's not, no real risk of phthalates in the bottle. Let's see the Clorox. Mm, what do you think, Do you think it's gonna be good or bad? Clorox leaks regular. Oh, even worse, it's an F. It's an F. F is other ingredients. So the environmental working group hates this one. This is the one that's most, the worst rated that we've seen. I use it every day on our sheets when we invariably have wear, wash our whites. So that's really frustrating. I wonder what kind of alternatives they have. Is it an F because it's just toxic? I mean, Clorox is absolutely toxic. Like you'll die by consuming it. But yeah. I don't know if it's an F just, you know, 
It's a good question. I don't know. Like, we definitely don't drink it. Clorox. I mean, you shouldn't drink any of this stuff, but if you drink Clorox, you'll die. If you drink like that stuff, you probably just right. not have a good day. Yeah. So. I wonder. We, we can look into that. Let's check that. I want to do a couple of items that Ellie uses every day. We actually don't put much on Ellie's skin. Like, I don't use really shampoo or baby um, like butt creams or uh, any sort of body wash on her for the most part. I mostly just bathe Ellie with water because I've read about issues with those things and she just doesn't seem to need it. Like she doesn't get, she gets very dirty with food but it all comes off with water. She's not like sweating or anything and her hair has been lovely. Maybe as she gets older, we'll need to introduce those things but I figured why start. And she's never had a diaper rash, um, but we do every day wear a wet wipe. Here we've got Pampers Sensitive, Perfume Free, and Huggies Natural Care Sensitive Wipes. I try to buy, like, in general, the ones that are kind of eco-friendly. At some point I was buying Honest, but those were really expensive, so I stopped. And then I use diapers on her. Huggy, we were, right, right now we're in the Huggies Little Movers. These are the ones I like the best these days. So let's see, oh, sorry. Let's see what these, what, whether there's any issues with these. Pampers, sensitive baby wipes, that's the one. Okay, actually these look like they are okay. They gave them a one, but they said that the info on them is limited. But that, that gives me confidence that that's good. Huggies natural care wipes. So these are a little bit not as, these are still okay too, but not as good as the Pampers Sensitive, but also limited info. And they don't have anything about the diapers. So I wonder if I Google the diapers. What's in your disposable diapers and are they safe for your babies? All right, this one's gonna require more research. So this is a look at all of the products that we are no longer going to be using in our household and that we are going to search for better alternatives for. So taking a look at all of these products lined up on the kitchen table and thinking about all the furniture and rugs and personal care products and stuff, I feel a little bit like Ellie, like totally upset and overwhelmed by this type of information. And you've raised a couple of good points that I think are probably worth. Yeah, my idea is that, you know, really Googling anything on the internet, particularly like an assertion like X item is bad, Will yield positive results. Um, that's kind of the the state of information on the internet right now. Um, with everything, you know, products, um, any opinion that you might have about really anything. So I think to get more, you know, clarity and confidence about the harms of some of these items, particularly things that have been used for a long time, I think it's really important to do additional research that we haven't done. I think this video was good just to get a sense of the stuff in general that's in some of these common household products. But whether or not those products are truly dangerous or, you know really really harmful or just moderately harmful or you know could be harmful in certain situations i don't really know and i'd love to do more research that's kind of a little bit more diligent than just like what does the internet think you really shouldn't believe everything that you read and so i'm gonna try to temper my anger and my frustration and do more do more research with you yeah. i'm excited to see how our thoughts progress we are going to be looking for substitutes for any products that we find truly deficient we'll be keeping you guys updated i think that the point of this video is really just to encourage you to start thinking more critically about what's in your house and what you're putting into your family into contact with just like we need to think critically about what we put into our bodies and how the chem how the chemicals in food and how the ingredients in food affect our hormonal systems and cause us to lose or gain weight or have a propensity to increase our risk of uh, certain diseases or not, we need to think critically about the products that we consume and try to be good consumers and try to reward companies that are doing a really good job of putting our health and wellness first. So that's going to be the goal for us for the next couple of videos and I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Comment down below with your thoughts, tell me your favorite products that are not harmful and tell me what you're concerned about. I'm really interested to know. Thanks so much. <laughs> I'm really interested to know. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Until next time, do well. And always make things better. Oh.